What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Yeah, I know it's been a minute. I'm trying to get back into the routine of doing my YouTube channels and vlogging, stuff like that. I'm in my truck right now. And of course, I'm at work. I won't be home till after the hall until after Thanksgiving. I'll be home before Christmas, that's for sure. Um, but while I've been sitting here, um, I was doing some stuff that. By the way, sorry about that. My camera decided to come down. And yes, I'm doing this on my phone because trying to carry a GoPro and all the other stuff while I'm out here on the road makes it very hard. Um, squirrel moment. Anyways, um, I am actually looking into, which I'm not actually looking into, it's going to happen after the holiday season. Um, I've been looking at building a foamy a foamy camper to pull behind my Harley or a cross-country bike. Now, <coughs> yeah, <coughs> I hate it when that shit goes down the wrong pipe. Um, I'm not after to go like wide. I'm not after to go see how freaking tall I can go. This is all about when I decide to go camping or go to a motorcycle rally, something like that. I don't have to pay for a hotel. I don't have to set up a tent. I've got the room to sleep. I can, you know, pretty much make the trailer, uh, the camper trailer, a little wider than what the mattress is going to be that I'm going to put in it. Um, and I've been I've been going through this motion to for a while now about keeping things light. Now, I've been watching a lot of YouTube tutorial videos on this also and different stuff. Now, one of the things that has been said is a um, foam fusion glue, which I'm, you know, pretty, pretty interested about because it's one of these things that when you take foam, like one inch or two inch foam and you got to mend them together and keep them tight while you're while they're drying or you know you got the tape around them and stuff uh you want a good bond now the other thing i have been looking at is fiberglass wrapping it now i have followed a guy out of another state and he's up apparently he's up in the northeast somewhere um and he was in the same predicament that even though it was foam, he didn't want to do the poor man's fiberglass. <coughs> so, what I was looking at, and I found him, is that he's actually using a marine grade epoxy resin with the fiberglass. So, when he puts it on there and it dries and tacks up, you know, gets you know, nice and tight, it's forming a tight seal, but it's also making strength, you know, without adding a whole lot of weight. So, that was some of the other stuff I've been looking at. Now, I'm not after no type of, like, exotic design. I am looking at a three-quarter inch plywood base for it. Um, and the reason I say three-quarter inch is because I'm not going to be using a subframe. Uh, the the three-quarter inch plywood is going to be the frame. Now, I've got this same system on my motorcycle trailer I pulled behind my black and silver Harley. That trailer was built in 1976. The plywood was just replaced in it last year. So you're looking at many years of it being sandwiched between two layers of fiberglass before any rock came out and had to be cut out and redone. So I'm looking at that. I also looked at an A-frame system for the thing to, for the trailer to sit on. <laughs> the only problem with an A-frame system Yes, you're still adding strength, but you're also adding weight. And being behind a motorcycle, unless you build a custom trailer hitch, which, oddly enough, here we go again, going to have to build a custom trailer hitch. So, I went through to Lowe's. I've been to Home Depot. Prices are going to vary right now, especially with the economy on some of these prices. Uh, I looked at both a 4x8 sheet of half inch and three quarter inch. 
uh, boarding for the foam, or, you know, for to make the foam walls up on. Um, the pink foam over at, I think it was Home Depot. Yes, I do have it listed right here because I was taking prices and listing this stuff. The pink foam, which was, looks like it may have been one inch. No, I'm sorry. That was half inch. Pink foam board was nine pieces at $38.99. I figured nine because if I mess up, I'm going to have to have some stuff to make over. If I go with the one inch, oh, excuse me, pink foam that was one and a half inch, not half inch. Sorry, pardon me. I'm sorry about that. Um, the one inch foam was $24.97 a piece. Now, there's several ways I got to look at this too because as I'm designing this, and I'm getting this out of my head, how it has to come together. I'm going to build my own door. Now, I'm going to use the same material as the side walls and roof to build the door. So, there again, we got to have something to screw to, right? So, I looked at, in case y'all learned, yes, I'm looking down at my note sheet pad as I'm talking to y'all because I want to make sure I'm telling y'all right. I looked at some one by 2 uh, boards or one by threes, which I already know. If you could probably buy one by fours and strip them down yourself if you got a good table saw, probably save yourself a lot of money. Um, those were two ninety seven each, and you no, know, me, I like to buy extras just pure shits and giggles sometimes because you never know what I might come up with later. So I looked at that by eighty dollars worth of. One by two or one by three, they're both the same price over at Home Depot. Um, I'm not too sure about that yet. I may want to just buy some like 10 one by fours and rip them down the center. Kind of an old school trick, but it works. Um, I also looked at some, let's see, half inch four by eight, they call it. Uh, sand plywood or sandalwood plywood. I was writing kind of quick on that, so please forgive me. Um, that was fifty four sixty eight for the half inch. Half inch, yeah, that was half inch. Uh, over at Home Depot. Now, if I went with Birch, Birch is seventy nine sixty eight over at Home Depot. Uh, and which was funny because the Birch in the three quarter inch plywood. And the regular uh, three quarters plywood was the same price. Figure that one out. Home Depot for you. So, yeah, so now I'm kind of jumping around there on some of this stuff. But if I do an A frame, then I'm having to go. I'm, I don't want the wheels sticking out past the trailer, I want them in. So I'm trying to make sure I design everything around in a weird way, which would be the mattress that would be going in the bed, or in the trailer, I should say. And the mattress is about a foot thick. It's made by Serta. It's a temperature control style bed. So I'm looking at that. Then I gotta look at wiring, um, which I gotta look up diagrams on that, figure out how I'm gonna do this. Uh, in case I get to a campsite, I want to run a small AC unit, which that's another thing I have not factored in yet, but I'm looking at that um, to figure out power-wise what I'm going to need as far as a small AC, and I'm going to try to see about you know the little vent things that you the top vent. Um, that now once I start really looking at this. And once I fiberglass the outside using the marine grade epoxy, uh, best place of best place that was recommended was a place called Taps Plastic. Um, so I'm going to talk with them a little bit. Um, I did save their website. You can find them if you go, if you Google um, a marine grade epoxy resin scroll down I think it was like on my end it was probably like the 12th or 13th listing but taps but they were actually in another video from YouTube 
So I am going to contact and talk to him about it because I do want to get this started after the holiday season. Uh, due to the fact that, one, I've got my sidecar rig coming up. This could be on this channel. Uh, we're going to get some modifications done to it, get it back on the road. The old girl has been with the family since 1975. So this trailer, I want to pull it up to Kentucky this year because I'm going to be performing a wedding for my, my, my son up there in Kentucky. And I don't want about to get a hotel room. And since they're doing it at a campground, what well, perfect way. Most campgrounds have showers. Um, so, yeah, and I'm looking at also wheel sizes. The main, one of the other things I'm looking at is torsion, uh, the torsion suspension, or torsion axle, if you want to call it that. Um, I think they call them torsion axle half shafts or something like that on eBay. Uh, but I'm also check on Amazon. Uh, I'm probably going to do a four lug because this is not going to be a super heavy duty. It's not, this whole thing's not designed to stand up in, okay? I want it to be so I can lean up. I maybe have a small cabinet, you know, about like this or something like that just above me. Put some clothes in. Um, maybe a couple small windows, you know, nothing, abs you know, astronomical, you know I mean? This is to be built for strictly traveling. Um, when I go up to Michigan to visit with my mom and stepdad and see my son and pick him up, um, which yes, y'all be proud of him. My son Kyle is up in Michigan right now. He got in some trouble in Dallas, but he's in Michigan now going to school. He's actually doing really well and actually passing high school. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him graduate. Uh, which I'm very proud he made a big turnaround. Uh, squirrel moment, wanted to tell y'all, I'm very proud of him right now. Um, of course, I'm always proud of him. But uh, anyways, so yeah, there's a lot of things I'm looking at. The price on the half axles or half torsion suspension axles from eBay was $250 for the set, uh, which was, they said 500 pound. Now, I'm not sure if they're considering that 500 pound each axle or 500 combined pounds. This trailer is not going to weigh that much. So 500 pounds should be more than sufficient. If I wanted to go bigger, I could. It's not going to hurt it any. Just go get a, a tighter ride, you know. Um, so there's a lot of factors and things that's going in on this. The biggest expense right now is actually going to be uh, the axles, the wheels, um, axles, wheels, maybe windows, uh, maybe, you know, the materials, uh, as far as like your, your phone glues, your tapes, your fiberglass, that stuff. So right now, those are some of your bigger expenses. However, I do have a head jump on some of that because... I do a lot of fiberglass work on the side for customers and people. So on the side of that, I've already got a head jump because I have like literally 15 bags of fiberglass, whether it's been woven or mat. Either way, it's there. I know I can use it. I've got a head jump on that. So I will be using some of that. Um, I will probably, more than likely, guy on YouTube was using a woven. I will probably go with a mat just because it's easier to smooth. Um, it's easier to smooth out. It's easier to do stuff. Woven is a good product as well. However, it takes multiple layers. Anybody who's used woven fiberglass knows it takes a lot to strengthen it up, sometimes two or three layers. Uh, matte seems to strengthen up pretty quickly upon drying, and it's just like one layer right there, and then maybe two, and it goes, and it's there. Uh, I'm not sure. I may sandwich them. I don't know. Just kind of depends on once we get in there, what type of strength I'm looking at, because the strength not only has to be on the outside, but as well as on the inside, because everything will be painted. Uh, inside, interior, um, it will be painted, but 
I may get like some of that fake wood paneling, kind of rip it a little bit, stain it, whatever. Just I don't know. I haven't decided on that part either. Um, <laughs> but I'll let you know as I get further along. Now I'm going to tell you right now and be upfront and honest. It's not going to happen until after the holidays. So once we get through Thanksgiving and Christmas and the New Year's, then I will start getting the materials. Um, as far as that, the I will make up my mind and let y'all know for sure on the foam uh, what size I'm going to use. I was looking at the one and a half inch, but or the one inch. I'm trying to keep it as light as possible. Now the wheels, when I go to do it, will not be outside the trailer. They will actually be inserted. So I'm going to have to create a, a fiberglass wheel, wheel well because I'm going to have to cut some weight down. I'm trying to make everything as light as possible. The trailer hitch is going to be another design. I'm probably going to copy maybe the one off my motorcycle hitch uh, because it was designed 1976. It's still around and it actually uses two three-quarter inch snap-on breakovers. Uh, it's an interesting trailer hitch. But other than that, so that's what my plans are. This is what we're going to do after the holidays. The wife has told me I'm already completely out of my damn mind for doing this. I don't care because this will be for me to go to and from rallies. Um, when the wife can join me, she'll be able to be with me, so with the kids. Uh, of course, when the kids are with us, I'll have to get a hotel room. So, everything else, hey, we'll take it for what it's worth. We're going to try to make this all happen um, and hopefully not have to spend eight months on it. Well, I don't want to spend eight months. I want to try to get it done within two to three months. So, I'm trying to get everything planned out ahead. Uh, including, I gotta look up windows. I don't even know where the hell to get windows at. I guess start out knowing for small RV windows or something. I don't know. Or create my own. <laughs> if I have to create my own, cool. Um, we'll find out. But anyways, as always, everybody, keep the shiny side up, the rubber down. Y'all have a great day. I will see you on the next one, and hopefully, y'all will see me a lot more here over the next couple of months. Talk to y'all later.